Hello everyone, it is Mass Ashley here once again, and today I will be reading you yet another kids lit book called Crinkle Roots Guide to Knowing Animal Habitats by Jim Arnosky. This book looks pretty interesting, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on in. There he is, his canoe with a snake on his shoulder. Ooh. Hello, my name is Crinkle Root. I'm an explorer and a wildlife finder. I found so many wild creatures sharing this sweet earth, I lost count somewhere around a billion. I see so many wild critters because I know where they all live. The natural places where wild animals live are called habitats. I'm going to visit lots of different wildlife habitats and you can come along too. Now the three things wildlife need to survive are food, cover or hiding places, and water. If you find all three, then you will find wildlife. The first place I want to show you is a watery place or wetland. A wetland is any place where water is near, at, or just above the surface of the ground. You may have a tiny wetland in your own backyard where the soil is always moist and the grass grows more lush or full. So here is a cross section of a wetland. The brown layer right here is the mud and the bluish layer is the water table or the water level in the soil. And then this more tan part here at the bottom is the sand, pebbles, and stones. And some types of wetlands are not firm enough to walk on. And the best way to observe most wetlands is in the company of an adult and from the safety of higher ground or a sturdy boardwalk. So sometimes those wetlands have too much water below the soil and then it gets really mushy and you'll just sink right into the soil. The three most common wetlands are marshes, swamps, and bogs. A marsh is full of tall grass, cattails, and reeds. Here water is above ground in many spots. A swamp is a place where many woody plants grow and water covers nearly all the land. And a bog is a place where the land actually floats on water. So some animals that live in the marsh is geese, herons, turtles, um, some ducks, muskrats, and frogs. Now in the swamp, we're going to have some birds, an otter, another heron, an alligator, a turtle, and a water moccasin, which is a kind of snake. And then in the bog on this picture, we've got some birds and a moose. So you can look at these pictures and kind of see the difference between um, and what characterizes each as their own kind of place. The shallow water of any wetland is a world of plants, rocks, sand, and sunken trees. It is a rich, weedy habitat for underwater wildlife. So some of the animals we've got here is a sunfish, we've got a mussel, a crayfish, or you might know it as a crawdad. They've got some little minnows, a snapping turtle, and a pickerel, which is a really long fish. You might have to look closely to see the fish because they all kind of blend in. In a woodland, tree trunks, stems, and branches crisscross and overlap. It takes sharp eyes to pick out even the noisiest creatures, like hammering woodpeckers or chirping red squirrels. But make no mistake, any woodland is habitat for a variety of wildlife. For every animal you hear or see, there are many more hiding. So some of the animals on this page is we've got a white-breasted nuthatch, which is a type of bird a red squirrel, and a great horned owl. In the woods, animals may be living high in the treetops, in middle branches or trunks, or on the woodland floor. See if you can find the wildlife living in this little patch of woods. I'll give you a hint. There are 24 in all, 27 if you count walking stick, sassafras, and me. All right, so staff, if you want, you can pause the video here and try and see if you can find all of those animals.
Climb aboard my old jalopy. There are some interesting places I want to show you that are miles apart. Along the way, we're sure to spot some wildlife near the road. Rabbits, deer, woodchucks, and other normally shy animals come out to the roadsides to feed on lush green plants growing in the open sunlight. Roadsides are also hunting grounds for hungry cat crows, hawks, and kestrels. So in this picture, we've got a ring-necked pheasant, some crows, a deer, the woodchuck, a little rabbit, and then the kestrel on the speed limit sign, and a red-tailed hawk flying high in the sky by the sun. Our first stop is a farmer's cornfield. Cornfields provide an ever-changing habitat for wildlife. In the spring, gulls, swallows, and bluebirds feed on beetles, grubs, and earthworms unearthed by the farmer's plow. By midsummer, when the corn stalks have grown high enough to provide cover, small animals move into nest and raise their young. At ripening time, the cornfield becomes a supermarket for raiding raccoons. By late fall, after the field of corn has been freshly cut and harvested, the scattered kernels are a feast for migrating geese. From small hillside meadows to vast rolling plains, grasslands are wide open, spaces where wildlife can thrive. At first, grassland looks void of anything but waving green stems, but take time to really look and you will discover something wonderful. So when you walk in grasslands, stop to check your clothes for ticks. Ticks are numerous, or there's uh, so many of them in tall grasses. You'll find more kinds of insects and spiders and grasslands than in any other habitat, such as this monarch butterfly right here. The badger is a grassland predator that can dig down 12 feet to catch burrowing prey. The coyote and red fox are often country predators that often share the same hunting grounds. Most small grasslands animals are birds or burrowers or both while the largest inhabitants of grasslands are grazing animals like the antelope and the bison. Wherever the road leads, you will find wildlife living there. Even the hottest, driest places can be home to animals. In the dry lands, wildlife find cover behind sagebrush and cactus, beneath rock ledges, or for some, simply by digging in and covering up with sand. Succulent plants provide both food and water, and for predators, there is prey. Here is just a small sample of the many wildlife species that inhabit dry lands from sagebrush country to desert sands. So they've got a mule deer, an armadillo, a little kangaroo rat, a jackrabbit, a diamondback rattlesnake, the road runner, a collared lizard, an elf owl, a horned lizard, and a broad-billed hummingbird. So those are all animals that live in drier conditions, like a desert. Learn how to recognize the different wildlife habitats from lowlands to mountains, wetlands to drylands. Don't be fooled by how small a place may be. Some wild critters get by in surprisingly little space. A bit of brush, a swampy puddle, a pile of rocks, a tiny woodlot, or a lone cactus. Well, now, I told you we'd cover a lot of territory, and we did. I counted over 80 different wildlife species on our trip. How many did you count? I hope you enjoyed the journey. I did. So did Sassafras. She always likes riding in the old jalopy. We'll see you soon. Until then, remember, wherever you go, you share the world with wildlife. And that is the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed our book this week. Um, learn some more about the animals and where they live and how they survive. And I hope you all have some really good discussions about this book. And I will see you next time for our next Kids Lit book. Bye, everyone.